Do you have a bunch of nice photos sitting on an old hard drive collecting dust? Well, you can actually consider selling those photos as stock photography and making a little bit of money that you wouldn't have made if they continued to sit on your hard drives. That's what I did in the spring of 2017 when I signed up to become a stock photographer. Since that time period, I have earned thousands of dollars from stock photography and learned a lot along the way. My biggest takeaway from this time period is that sometimes the photos that end up being your top sellers are the ones that you would never expect. See, with stock photography, it's not always the most picturesque, idyllic images of nature that end up being your top sellers. Oftentimes, it's, you know, those random unexpected photos that might actually have a lot of commercial value or news value. If you are a brand new stock photographer, you'll definitely want to focus on uploading photos that are being searched for in less saturated categories where you actually have a fair chance of having your photos be discovered in a sea of millions or billions of photos. So which photos sell? In this video, I'm going to show you a few of my photos that frequently sell versus similar photos that don't sell at all and explain why I think this is happening. Before I begin, I just want to mention that these are all photos that I have uploaded to Shutterstock, although I am on a few different stock photography platforms. If you are interested in trying it out for yourself, I have a link below where you can sign up to be a contributor. For the record, I am not sponsored by Shutterstock or by anyone for that matter. I am literally just sharing my own observations and experience. So let's begin. All right, so let's start with these two photos. These are both photos I took during the Washington DC Pride Parade last June. One of these photos sells more than twice as often as the other one. And which one do you think that is? Well, if you guessed the left photo, you guessed correctly. This photo sells quite often. In fact, it was a top seller for, you know, the weeks after the Pride Parade. And the reason I think this one sells more than the photo of the flags is because the flags are a concept that are easy to replicate and that there are surely a lot of similar images on Shutterstock already. But don't take my word for it. Let's see. If you type in Pride flags on Shutterstock, you get 93,518 results. Now there are a lot of photos already on the platform that are pretty similar to this photo. So, you know, with this photo, I do get some sales, but there is a lot of competition as well with similar looking images. Now, the other image I took is a little more personal. It shows the actual Washington DC Pride Parade. You know, it shows a woman who was partaking in the Pride Parade and it illustrates that specific parade more so than a generic photo of a flag. If you type in Washington DC Pride Parade, you will get 496 results, which is a lot less than the 93,000 that you would get when you're just looking for photos of flags. Now take a look at the next two photos. One of them is a photo of the German Chancellor, while the other one is a photo of the German Chancellor with Trump. And one of these photos has never sold. Can you guess which one? Well, the photo that has never sold is the photo of the German Chancellor. This is why I think that is. Now, if you type in the name of the German Chancellor on Shutterstock, you will get 4,486 search results. And there are a lot of portraits of her there that are a lot nicer than the portrait that I took, which wasn't really a portrait, more of like, you know, a speech. Now, if you type in the name of the German Chancellor next to, you know, Donald Trump, you will get 202 search results. So we already narrowed that down a little bit. And when you scroll through those 202 results, you can actually see a lot of them are not properly keyworded because in many of these photos, uh, both political figures are not in the photo together. So when somebody is looking on Shutterstock for a photo of, you know, the German leader next to the American leader, they are very likely to find my photo because there's not that much competition. There are not too many other photos of the two of them together. However, if they are just looking for a photo of her, there's plenty of nice photos of just her. So that's why I think the one photo sells versus the other one that does not sell. 
Let's take a look at these two photos. These are both aerial photos of, you know, a road in a forest. And they're not really spectacular. I mean, honestly, this is not really great photography. But one of these photos is actually a pretty successful photo on my Shutterstock and Adobe Stock account, whereas the other photo has never sold. And which one do you think that is? Well, if you guessed the more summery looking photo, you are correct. And the reason lies within the keywords. So this road, you know, that's surrounded by tropical green bushes or whatever, sells so often on stock platforms for me because people are searching for the name of that specific road. It's kind of a famous road. And when they're searching for that road, they find this photo. Meanwhile, the other photo of the road is like kind of in the middle of nowhere. The road is not special. Nobody knows about it. It doesn't really, you know, have any sort of name that I knew about it. So there's nothing in the keywords that identifies the name of this road. And even if there was like, it's not a famous road. So there's no reason why somebody would want to download the other photo, especially since it's not like photographically masterful or anything. This kind of just demonstrates that sometimes people need specific photos of specific places. And in that case, it's very important that you keyword your photos properly with as much information as you can to really help people find those specific places that you photograph. Definitely check out this video right here, which talks a little bit more about how you can revolutionize your sales with keywords. Now, the next two photos are photos of trash. I've talked about trash before. I don't remember if I've talked about these specific trash photos, but the photo on the left shows a pretty full overflowing trash can, while the photo on the right is uh, again, an overflowing trash can, but with a bunch of people in the background. So which of these photos do you think gets downloaded more? Well, it's actually the one that has, you know, all of the tourists and people in the background. And here's why I think that's the case. This photo illustrates more than just one concept. It does not just illustrate the concept of trash. It illustrates the concept of trash in Washington, DC on the National Mall during cherry blossom season, which is like peak tourism season. And at this time of year, everyone who lives here, we pretty much always witness this overflowing trash. At least personally, I always see it. Now take a look at the next two photos. Both of these photos are of the same city, a city called Annapolis in Maryland. One of these photos is a top selling photo of mine, while the other photo has never sold. Which one? Well, I think this one's pretty easy actually. The one that has sold quite frequently is the drone photo I took of Annapolis. And the one that has never sold is, you know, a photo of the Annapolis Harbor, but it's from the ground level. Now, if you have a drone, you can definitely get a different perspective of, you know, some of those places that are already pretty saturated on Shutterstock. And that's why I often see my drone photos of a certain place selling more often than my ground level photos. Now take a look at the next two photos. One is a photo of a gun sitting on, you know, some grass. And the other photo is a photo of a gun violence protest, which one sells more often. Well, in this case, I think it's also pretty simple. The photo of the protest sells more often. In fact, this is another top selling photo of mine. This was a protest that took place on the, I believe it was the five year anniversary of the Sandy Hook shooting. And this photo is constantly being used in news articles talking about gun violence. Now, if you're online on Shutterstock.com and you type in gun violence protest, you will get about 7,000 results. If you type in Sandy Hook protest, you will get only 309 photos. So you can already see that this photo can rank in many different ways of being searched on Shutterstock and the competition there is not too high. However, if you just search for guns and rifles, let's just use both words to make sure, you know, the images are relevant. You will find 201,000 search results and your gun photos, I mean, yeah, they're gonna be in that sea of other gun photos. Now the next two photos are both photos of celebrities. Which one do you think sells? Well, if you have no idea who these people are, then this one would be pretty difficult. 
but if you know who these people are, then you'll know that one is more famous than the other. The photo on the right is a photo of Jessica Alba, who is a famous actress, and that photo that I took of her sells quite often. In fact, when you search for Jessica Alba on Shutterstock, that photo is in the first page of results. The other photo is a photo of the Washington DC mayor, and this photo has sold a few times, but not too many. And one, that's probably because it's not really a good portrait of her. You can't really tell what she's doing. And two, she is not as famous as Jessica Alba. There probably just aren't that many searches happening for her. And if people are finding photos of her, they probably want a little bit more of a portrait. So in the photos that were downloaded more frequently, you can see that there's often an element of specificity, something that makes that photo more specific to a concept or a place, or stands out a little bit more than other photos in that category would. Now, if you're new to stock photography, in order to bring in a decent monthly income, you'll definitely wanna focus on quality, quantity, and topic. Stock photography is not an easy game, but if you want to learn more, definitely check out my 30 plus videos that I have here on this channel in my stock photography playlist. Subscribe if you're new here, give it a thumbs up to help it succeed in this saturated world of YouTube videos, and I will see you guys in the next video. Oh, and if you're sitting here and you're curious how I was able to upload and sell photos of people and properties without model or property releases, then definitely check out this video right here, which is gonna explain all of that because that is the most common question I get. Till next time.